Our first speaker is Dr. Tom Workington. He is a professor and pulse crop breeder at the Crop Development Centre at the University of Saskatchewan, and he has been in that role since 1999. Uh, additionally, Tom holds the Ministry of Agriculture Strategic Research Program Chair in Field Pea Breeding and Genetics. He is also involved in breeding short season soybeans for Saskatchewan. And today he will be giving an update on pea variety development. So I'll hand it over to you, Tom. Okay, oh, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Lori. Can you folks hear me and see my slides? We sure can, Tom. If you wanna just uh, switch to presenter mode, we should be good to go. Okay, there we go. Looks great, take it away, Tom. Okay, Th thanks a lot again, uh, uh, Lori. And um, yeah, it's a great opportunity uh, to be here. Thank you. I, I wish I could see all of you folks in, in person, uh, but uh, this is uh, our compromise under these conditions. Um, I want to show you the, the opening slide uh, in the sense of uh, the new Crop Development Center logo. Uh, it's the 50th anniversary of, uh, of CDC. And uh, you may see this type of uh, slide template uh, from talks of, uh, of others from our group. So uh, I want to talk to you about, uh, first of all, uh, yellow pea varieties. And uh, this little graph is a summary of the uh, most widely grown uh, yellow pea varieties in Saskatchewan in 2021. The data are coming from uh, Saskatchewan Crop Insurance Corporation. And uh, you can see that uh, CDC Meadow uh, is still uh, the most widely grown. It has been for uh, approximately a decade now. Um, CDC Inca, Amarillo, and Spectrum are the ones that are following uh, Meadow. And then you have three varieties from Agriculture Canada, uh, Carver, Chrome, and Ardill followed by three more from CDC, Golden, Lawachko, Saffron, and then a Barth from uh, Lima Grain. There are other yellow pea varieties being grown. Some folks are, are growing varieties that have been, uh, that were first released 10, 20, 30 years ago, but these are the ones that are grown the most. And if you click the next um, uh, animation, you'll see that um, these are the five varieties where uh, the production area increased in 2021 compared to 2020. So that's Inca, um, Spectrum, Carver, Chrome, and Lawachko. Uh, all the other varieties are either steady or, uh, or were declining in 2021. And if you click one more, uh, some new data that uh, I discovered from SAS Crop Insurance uh, gives a summary of uh, the pedigreed seed acres uh, and the, variety, the yellow pea varieties that are most be, being most grown under pedigree seed production. And there you see Spectrum and Lawachko uh, at the beginning. So that gives me the impression that uh, those two varieties will likely uh, be expanding in production in 2022. You also see uh, Chrome, Inca, Canary, Carver, Profi, Amarillo or Dill. And I was a little bit surprised by the variety Profi on that list. Um, it's actually a variety that was first released uh, by uh, Danesco Seeds uh, 25 plus years ago. So there, it must have found a niche or a resurgence. Uh, if you click one more, uh, this is a summary uh, of, of information that uh, uh, you could develop for yourself if you like. It comes out of the new seed guide, which I'm showing you here, and this page here about uh, P. And um, uh, basically, uh, what I've summarized are the uh, top yielding yellow pea varieties uh, in Saskatchewan. Uh, you see that uh, I've ranked them based on the average yield between the yield in the south and the north of the province. Um, you you can see the years of how many years it's been tested. Uh, mat is maturity. Lodging is uh, how well it stands up. One to nine. One is better. Nine is very flat. Myco is short for Mycosphorella or the Ascochyta blight complex. 
again, it's a one to nine scale and uh, a lower score is better. Uh, Fusarium root rot, um, MR, moderately resistant versus I intermediate, so MR is better. You see a trend where I've put in bold the, uh, the things that I like, um, so that that can give you a clue. Seed coat breakage, uh, good versus fair. The protein concentration of the variety as compared to CDC Amarillo over here, uh, it's 100 for yield and it's 23.0 for protein. So uh, some are a little more, some are a little less than, than Amarillo. And also the pedigreed seed uh, uh, status of those varieties. Uh, C being certified. So I suppose, uh, like uh, Dr. Slinkard uh, said long ago, the, the most important things uh, about, peep, uh, about uh, plant breeding is uh, yield, yield, and yield. And, and definitely, uh, I also uh, am uh, in agreement with that concept. So that's why I rank them from higher to lower yield. But I think it also, uh, when you talk to people, uh, probably your customers and others, after yield, there, there's going to be other things that, that they'll be looking for. And so um, maybe, you know, I encourage you and, and, uh, and those that, that uh, you sell seed to, to pay attention to, to uh, all the traits in the table and, uh, you know, take that into account in variety selection. So, uh, for example, um, Inca, Lawachko, and, and Spectrum are quite widely grown and you see that in general they're quite good for lodging and uh, myco, uh, good seed coat breakage score. Uh, Lawachko and Spectrum have higher protein than, uh, than Amarillo. So th those are considerations uh, to take into account. Also the number of years of testing, in general you could assume that uh, more years of testing means that the numbers in the table get more and more uh, reliable uh, over time. Uh, maybe let's go to the next slide. We'll switch from yellow pea to green pea. Green pea is not grown uh, on the same scale as, um, as yellow, but nevertheless, it's an important market class. And here you see uh, forest, razor, limerick, green water, spruce, and striker as the varieties that are most grown uh, these days. Uh, they, they do happen to all come from CDC. In the case of green water, I think the name is a bit too long, so the CDC part got cut off. Um, if you click the next one, you see that out of these um, out of these uh, varieties, six varieties, only forest was was the only one that increased in production in 21 compared to uh, to 20. And if you click again, um, uh, again, these are data from the the seed guide. And you can see that in the case of forest, it is um, the highest yielder of the bunch. So that's certainly, I think, uh, probably the main reason uh, why its popularity uh, has been increasing. Um, uh, with green pea, particularly, pay attention to bleaching uh, score, ability to retain the, the green color. Uh, forest is good uh, in that category, as are most of the varieties. But you might know anecdotally or practically or from your own experience that there's a bit of a variation within what I would call G here. So, you know, pay attention to that as you compare the varieties. Probably I could say that Striker and Razor are, tend to be maybe a little bit better than some of the others that also have G, but they're within, within a fairly narrow band. Um, yeah, and I think you can see that there is certified seed readily available for forest and, and spruce for that matter. If we go to the next slide, uh, on the next, this slide and the next two, I want to feature three particular varieties that are new. Um, this one, CDC 5296-2, yellow pea. Uh, we haven't named it yet, but uh, we're getting close. Uh, so this one is, is available for release uh, now and perhaps Lori will, will uh, remind you of those details uh, later. Um, here are the features. Uh, so this variety is not in the seed guide yet, of course, it hasn't been released yet, but if it were in the seed guide, these are the numbers that you would see. You would see 108% 
of CDC Amarillo in the south and 110% of CDC Amarillo in the north. So it has good yield. Uh, protein is half a percent uh, greater than Amarillo. Lodging is good. Uh, disease package is good. It's, I would say, medium early and smooth, round, bright seeds. So I think it's quite a good uh, combination of, of things. Um, you might ask how it differs or in what features it differs compared to um, CDC Hickey or CDC Tollefson, which we released recently. In terms of yield, it's pretty similar. Uh, you can't pick much between them in terms of yield. This one might be, when I say medium early, it might be just a touch earlier to maturity than, than uh, Hickey and Tollefson. And smooth, bright, uh, smooth, round, bright seeds. The seed type might be just a touch nicer than those two, but uh, I, I put those comments a bit. You know, I'm, I'm hedging when I make those comments because, um, in some ways, I think you know those those subtle differences will come out um, in your own productions, uh, perhaps even more than from our small plots thus far. So you can consider that one as, as an option. And if we click one more, uh, CDC Rider. Uh, so this one, we have a name already. Uh, in fact, we named it a year ago, but uh, because um, there wasn't really enough uh, reader seed to, to release last year, uh, it's being released for the first time uh, this year. So we already have five years of testing. I could ex just let you know, like five years means two years in what we call the co-op tests. So those are the registration trials. Uh, I use the data from the Saskatchewan locations. Uh, the the co-op trial is grown in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. But for the purpose of reporting um, into the eventual seed guide, we use the, the locations from from Saskatchewan only, and then and thus uh, three more years. So two years co-op and three years in the regional trial. So CDC Rider has been tested quite a lot already. You see the yield here uh, quite good. 101 in the south, 98 in the north. So it's it's um, similar, I would say, in yield so far to um, forest. Maybe a bit better than forest for lodging resistance. CDC Rider has been one of the best. Uh, for lodging resistance in the uh, regional trial the last three years. Also good disease resistance package, media maturity, the seeds, the seeds are nice. Um, possibly a little bit nicer than forest would be my, my thought if you combine the smooth round uh, aspect as well as the, uh, the bleaching aspect. So that one um, uh, is available uh, now and, and Lori will, will I think provides some more details. And if we click one more, the last uh, variety that I, I want to feature uh, today, 5360-4, uh, it's also a green one, potential for release uh, a year from now. Uh, we have four years of testing, um, two in the co-op and two in the regional trial. You see it has strong yield. Probably it, it would be the highest of the green peas. 108% uh, of Amarillo, both in the south and the north, um, with with uh, quite good lodging, disease, uh, package, medium. The seeds are nice. Probably if we had to compare um, Ryder um, uh, to, um, to 5360, um, uh, Ryder might be just a little bit nicer in terms of seed type. But again, it takes uh, you know uh, wide experience from seed growers as well as uh, regional trial and such to 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 really finally elucidate that. So I think if we go to the next slide, I, I, that's basically what I have to share uh, with you today. Um, I certainly like to acknowledge uh, the, the staff of uh, of the CDC Pulse Breeding uh, Group uh, for their hard work uh, in. Uh, doing everything with respect to uh, the plant breeding program from making new crosses to 
uh, growing the populations, be it indoors or outdoors, um, and dealing with all, all kind of interesting challenges. Um, thanks to, uh, to Dave and Craig uh, that, that the two of them uh, lead the way as far as developing the breeder seed, growing, multiplying the breeder seed of, of uh, pulses as well as the cereals and flax uh, crops at the CDC. Um, sometimes we take for granted our administrative staff, uh, but uh, they do a lot of work in terms of uh, keeping everything running from HR to financial things and such. And I certainly acknowledge all my colleagues uh, at the U of S uh, and other uh, places in Saskatoon and Canada internationally uh, in, in plant breeding and in research. We, we really uh, work with, uh, with a broad community. Um, and in the case of crops like pulses, um, you know, we tend to work with most, most all the, the relevant uh, breeders, geneticists around the world. Uh, I don't know if you could necessarily do that in a crop like corn or wheat, but pulses is a smaller community and, and we really get to know them over the years. Um, certainly acknowledge uh, funding from, from all the organizations you see uh, listed here, the Ministry of Ag, SAS Pulse Growers, uh, Manitoba Pulse, Alberta Pulse, Western Grains, and, and the university where, where, <coughs> where me and Bunyamin are located. So maybe one last slide and uh, thanks, uh, thanks for your attention, folks.